Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss current earnings and profit and accumulated earnings and profit, which are known as CEP and AEP. Now, what is the big idea of CEP and AEP? Why do we need to know about those two? Well, because we need to determine the amount of dividend from the corporate distribution. So when the company distributes dividend to us, make a distribution, not dividend, when they make a distribution, we say that as long as the distribution is coming from CEP and AEP, then distribution is considered dividend. And that's important. Now, how to compute CEP, current earnings and profit? We learned about this in the prior session. So if you are not familiar with how to compute CEP, you want to make sure you are, because in this session, I assume you know how to do so. And basically it's taxable income plus or minus certain adjustments, but that's very important because in this session, I assume you know how to compute CEP. What is AEP? Well, AEP is accumulated earnings and profit. It's the total of all current years CEP since 1913, when the first corporation was incorporated, reduced by any distribution of EEP. So AEP is an accumulated account of CEP. The first thing we're going to look at are the general rules for AEP and CEP. When we have those, how do we treat the distribution, assuming we have a distribution? Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. The general rule is to distinguish between CEP and AEP because the taxability of corporate distribution depends on how much current and earnings are allocated to each distribution made throughout the year. Now we're going to have four different scenarios when it involves CEP and AEP. So we need to understand what they are. The first rule is, or the first scenario is, you have a positive CEP and a positive accumulated earnings and profit. So I'm just going to refer to them as CEP and AEP. What does that mean? It means this year you have a positive taxable income plus and minus the adjustment. So basically the corporation made a profit and they have dividend ability for this current year. And from prior year, they do have prior year dividend ability. So any distribution made, it will be considered dividend to the extent of EMP. The second scenario, you could have a positive current earnings and profit. So this year you have a positive taxable income and plus or minus the adjustment. So you have the ability to pay dividend from the current year. But the fr from the prior year, you have a deficit in AEP. In other words, you, made, you don't have a positive AEP from prior year. You made a distribution. Again, what do you have to do here? The amount of the distribution is dividend to the extent of CEP and you don't net AEP to CEP. So you have to be very careful here. First, what you do, you would say, here's my distribution. To the amount of CEP, it's dividend, and that's it. Well, what if you pay more? If you pay more, well, if you pay more, we learned this, then it's going to be return of capital, which is tax-free. It's not taxable. And if you pay more and you no longer have basis, return of capital to the extent of basis, it's considered capital gain. And don't worry, we're going to work many, many examples in this session. The third scenario, you have a negative CEP. It means this year your, your taxable plus or minus the adjustments is negative. So this year you did not generate any dividend ability and you have a positive AEP. However, from prior years, you have a reserve in AEP. When you have a negative CEP and positive AEP, under those circumstances, you can net them. Now, why can you net them? Because what is CEP? CEP eventually closed to AEP. What we're saying here is you don't have CEP. CEP is negative. Therefore, if you don't have CEP, go ahead and close it to AEP. So you net them and the net amount 
you net the two number and if the number is negative if it's positive well dividend to the extent of that positive number if the negative if you net them and you have a negative in other words you have a larger CEP negative than the positive AEP you don't have any dividend well you don't have any dividend it's ROC to the extent of basis then capital gain the fourth scenario and you know what the fourth scenario is it's negative CEP negative AEP you don't have any positive taxable income plus or minus adjustments and from prior years you don't have any accumulated earnings and profit well the distribution that you make will be no will have no dividend now again we're going to go over the order of distribution this is important the distribution is dividend to the extent of CEP and AEP and it has to be in this order once that's used up any distribution made in excess of CEP and AEP is considered return of capital to the extent of basis once that's used up anything left is considered capital gain and we're going to work many many different scenarios illustrating this concept starting with the first one the first one basically we said we have positive CEP positive AEP we still have to know a little bit more about this if positive balance in both current and accumulated distribution are deemed first from the CEP so if you have positive CEP and positive AEP first you say I'm, I'm taking money I'm distributing money from the current year then once that's used up I'm distributing money from AEP which is both dividend but first you use up CEP the current that's why it's called the current if the distribution exceeds current e EMP you must allocate current and accumulate it to each distribution so let's assume you made a distribution and we're gonna see an example and that distribution in total a greater than CEP and AEP it's greater than both of them so the, the, they are not enough so we have to see how to allocate this how to allocate this if CEP is positive allocate current CEP on a pro rata proportionally using a dollar amount if CEP is positive if CEP is negative what you have to do is you have to assume that we not we earned we we generated this negative with this loss equally throughout the year therefore we allocate negative CEP evenly we allocate positive CEP proportionally pro rata don't worry we're gonna work examples we always allocate AEP chronologically why are we saying this because you're gonna see in certain examples we're gonna be making payments not by the end of the year we're gonna be making payments throughout the year for example mid-year or the first quarter then how do we have to allocate the payment if we have positive and or negative CEP and AEP we'll work examples start with a simple example we have shareholder a owns 100% of the company the company distributed $35,000 at the end of the year we're assuming 1231 is the end of the year right now CEP is 30,000 AEP is 20,000 again what do we say how much of that payment is dividend how much of it is a return of capital how much of it is capital gain well of the 35,000 the first thing we're gonna say 30,000 is definitely dividend and that's gonna make CEP go down to zero well we still have 5,000 the 5,000 is AEP comes from AEP and that's also dividend and we're gonna have remaining AEP of 15 so the whole payment is dividend let's take a look at another example we have 30,000 in CEP 5,000 AEP and we assume we're gonna have 11,000 in basis here's what we did we made a distribution two distributions one April 30th for 18,000 another distribution on November 30th of 22,000 so notice both CEP and AEP are positive but we have to notice that we made a distribution total of 40,000 we made a distribution total of 40,000 but both CEP and AEP together they are 35,000 in other words we made the distribution but in, but but it is in excess of CEP and AEP well since since CEP is positive what we're gonna do since CEP is positive it is positive we're gonna allocate the payment from CEP on a pro rata to each distribution what is pro rata what's pro, pro rata well the pro rata is the first distribution is 18,000 it's 18 out of 45,000 uh, out of 40,000 what's 40,000 the 18 plus 22 is 40,000 this is the total so what we say is 
of the 30,000 of the first of the 30,000 of the 30,000 of CEP we're going to assume 45% of it was up to April 30th why because we assume that we earned 45% of CEP based on the distribution based on the pro rata distribution 18 out of 40 which is 45% was distributed from CEP and the remainder the other payment which is the distribution of 22,000 22 out of the 40 which will be that's going to be the ratio is 55% so simply put 13,500 is taken out of CEP for the first distribution so the first distribution was 18,000 this is how much we distributed 18,000 on April at the end of April so how do we know how much of that from CEP well we we use the pro rata 18 out of 40 18 out of the total is 45 percent we assume 45 percent comes out of CEP well if the 18,000 13,500 of it came out of CEP where's the remainder remainder coming from if we have AEP it's going to come out of AEP and we do have 4,500 remaining and that's going to come out of AEP now the balance in CEP now is 16,500 the balance in AEP is 500 and both of those are considered what both of them are considered dividend both of them are considered dividend now let's see what else do we have here so actually we distributed not 18 we distributed sorry 30,000 uh, we distributed no, we distributed 18,000 the first uh, on on April 15th so what we did is we made the distribution basically we allocated the distribution now the return of capital is still 11,000 we did not touch that then we made a distribution on on November 30th how much was the distribution the distribution was 22,000 now this distribution was 22,000 Again, how much of that it's going to come out of CEP? How much of that it's going to come out of AEP? We know the second distribution, we assume 55% comes out of CEP. On November 30th, we made a distribution of 22,000. How are we going to allocate this distribution? First thing, it's going to come out of CEP. How much it's going to come out of CEP? Again, we're going to make a uh, we're going to make this pro rata distribution 22,000 this is the total distribution out of out of what out of 40,000 22 out of 42 is 55 percent that's it this is the ratio so out of this amount 16,500 comes out of CEP which is once it does that it's going to bring CEP down to zero so that's going to bring CEP after the distribution down to zero so notice we have 22,000 16,500 came out of CEP then we have the next thing to see if we have AEP we have 500 of AEP that's gonna come up come out of AEP that's gonna make AEP also go down to zero and both of these are dividend they're considered dividend now we still have to account for 5,000 okay what happened to that 5,000 what do we consider this 5,000 that's remaining from the distribution well if we have basis it's gonna reduce the basis do we have basis yes we have 11,000 of basis therefore the 5,000 comes out of the basis now how much do we have basis after this distribution 11 minus 5 equal to 6,000 so at the end of the day we have in total in total zero CEP at, at the end of the year CEP is gone AEP is gone the amount of this total distribution is 35,000 considered dividend which is 18 and 17 and we have return of capital of 6,000 those are the total balances I'm sorry uh, 6,000 um, total balance is a uh, total balance is 6,000 in basis and return of capital we still have a basis of 5 okay and the dividend is 35 let's take a look at this example we have negative CEP notice here we have negative CEP positive AEP and we have 10,000 return of capital we made a distribution on April 30th for 32,000 now what did we say when we have a negative CEP when we have a negative CEP and we have 12,000 we're going to assume 
that we incur this loss, not pro rata based on the distribution, we're going to assume this loss is spread evenly throughout the year. Well, the number is 12,000. If we're going to spread it evenly throughout the year over 12 months, we're going to assume that each month we operated, we are going to account for a thousand. Therefore, when we made the first distribution on, on April, on April, on April 30th, what do we say if we made the distribution on April 30th? We say we have negative 4,000, negative 4,000 on April 30th because from January till April 30th, it's 4,000. Okay, so of the 12,000, we assume 4,000 is as of April 30th, which means negative 4,000. Now, the question is when I, when I, when I, when I, when I do this in my in my life class, I ask the students, how much dividend is there? And some says, well, the dividend is 13,000. Some say the dividend is 25,000. Some say none, because basically on this 32,000. So let's assume how do we compute the dividend under those circumstances? Well, let's see. So we're what we're gonna do first, we are going to bring down net 4,000. We're gonna assume CEP is negative 4,000 as of April, April 30th. And we have 25,000. Well, if we have negative and positive, what do, what do we do if we have a negative CEP and positive AEP? We can net them. Therefore, as of April April 30th, at the end of April, we have 21,000. 21,000, why? Because we can net them. We can net them. Now we start to make the distribution. How much did we distribute it on April 30th, we distributed 32,000. Well, if we distributed 32,000, we have AEP of 21, and what's AEP considered? Dividend. Let's start with that. So we're going to use the AEP. What happened to our AEP after the distribution? AEP went down to zero, and that's 21,000 of dividend. Now, we distributed 32. We used up, we used up 21. Well, it means we still have to account for the remainder of the payment. How are we going to treat this? But remember, also CEP balance is 8,000 because it was negative 12. We used up 4. We still have negative, negative 8. And now the remainder, the remainder, the remainder is how much? The remainder is 11,000. We still have 11,000 out of the 32. Well, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to reduce. We have return of capital of 10,000. We're going to use up 10,000 return of capital still going to remain 1000 from the distribution because the distribution is 32 21 is AEP dividend 10 is ROC which is not taxable return of capital and the remainder is capital gain of a thousand so all in all uh, CEP at the end of the year will be zero why because CEP will be zero because we're going to transfer this CEP to AEP so this 8000 of CEP doesn't stay as of 1120x8 because it has to be closed. Now, when we start the beginning of 1108, we're starting with negative with negative AEP. So we started with 25,000 AEP. We made the payment. We used it up. And we said that's dividend. We distributed. Then at the end of the year, from the prior year, from 20x7, we generated 8,000 negative CEP, which is transferred to AEP. Also, your basis are zero. So next year, when you make when you make a distribution, let's assume the following year, the company did not have a positive CEP. Let's assume that's the case. They operated the business, taxable income is negative, plus or minus adjustment is negative, negative CEP. Any distribution they make, it will be only capital gains because the basis are zero. We're, we're going to assume that no basis were created as well, so everything will be capital gain. Let's take a look at this example. We have negative CEP and positive AEP. We made a distribution on April 30th of 18,000. We made a distribution on November 30th of 22,000, total of 40,000. CEP is negative. CEP is negative. When CEP is negative, what do we have to know? If CEP is negative, we allocate we allocate the loss over equally over the year. Now, since it's 12,000, that's easy. We're going to allocate the loss over 12 months, so that's easy. And when do we net them? Because we have net negative CEP, positive AEP, we are allowed to net them under this scenario. We net them at the time of the distribution. Okay. Therefore, the first four months is we have a loss of 4,000. Again, 12,000 divided by 12. 
by this by the November distribution we have seven months seven thousand of losses and by the end of the month by the end of the year for the month of December we're gonna have a negative loss so these losses equal to twelve thousand this is the CEP that we said was incurred evenly throughout the year let's go ahead and start to allocate this this distribution well the first thing we do we're gonna we're gonna say we're standing as of April 30th as of April 30th we have a negative 4,000 CEP and positive AEP of 24. If we have negative CEP, positive AEP, what can we do? We can net them. So I'm going to net them. So I'm going to transfer this 4,000 to AEP and makes AEP now 21,000. On this date, we made a distribution of 18,000. Great. The AEP will be able to, to absorb all the distribution. So out of the, out of the 18,000, all of it is dividend. All of it is dividend. All of it is dividend and we have 3,000 remaining in AEP. Now we're going to fast forward till 1130. By 1130, we assume we incurred 7,000 of losses. Now we have 7,000 of losses on CEP and 3,000 of AEP. Negative CEP, positive AEP, what do we do? We net them. So we're going to positive CEP to transfer it to AEP. When it's transferred to AEP, it's going to give us AEP of negative 4,000. Now, now CEP is zero a as of 11.30. AEP is negative 4,000. Now we made a distribution of 22,000. Well, of the distribution, how much of it is dividend? Nada. We don't have any dividend because we don't have any AEP. AEP is negative. So 10,000 of it is ROC because we have return of capital of ROC. Now the basis is zero. And guess what? What do we have to do with the remaining 12,000? The remaining 12,000 is capital gain. Now then by December we have an additional, by December we have an additional CEP of negative 1,000. Maybe you cannot see it, but at the end negatives, negative 1,000. And what's that going to do? That's going to be close to AEP and AEP at the end of the year will be negative 5,000 because negative CEP is transferred at the end of the year to AEP. AEP is already negative. It's going to be negative AEP of 5,000. Let's look at another scenario where CEP is positive, CEP is positive, and AEP has a deficit, negative. Now, again, under those circumstances, we don't net them out. We don't net them out. We net them out under scenario three. We don't net them out. Distribution is deemed taxable to the extent of positive earnings and profit. Let's take a look at a few examples. We have this example. Corporation distributed 75,000 and we have stock basis of 10,000. We have stock basis of 10,000. Well, if we have a positive CEP, we assume that the of the 75,000, 30,000 is CEP, which is dividend, which is dividend. And how about the remainder? Well, the remainder, what's going to happen is we're going to eat up of the 75,000 it's going to eat up the basis the basis now are zero which is this is this distribution is tax free and anything left is capital gains which is 35,000 so simply put of the 75,000 30,000 is dividend 10,000 is ROC return on capital not taxable and this is 10k and the remainder is 35k this is how we distributed this 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 75,000. Let's look at scenario three and scenario four. If accumulated EMP is positive and current is negative at the date of the distribution, you can net them out. You can net them out. Okay, and we did this earlier. If balance is zero or deficit, distribution is return of capital. If the overall, you know, if we don't have AEP or and CEP when we net them, it's zero. If it's positive, it's the, it's dividend to the extent of the balance in in AEP. Let's look at an example. At the start of the year, Slate Inc., a calendar year taxpayer, has accumulated EMP of 10,000, accumulated of 10,000. So CEP is, uh, the corporation experienced a deficit in CEP. CEP is negative 15,000 and AEP is positive 10. Okay, positive 10. AEP is positive then. On July 1st, notice in the middle of the year, Slate distributed 6,000 of cash to Rebecca. Rebecca has a basis of 7,500 and we have a basis for Rebecca of 7,500. Okay. 
what do we do? We're going to go to July 1st and net them out. Okay, what do we net them out? Do we net the 15,000 plus 10? No, we're going to assume CEP is incurred evenly. So as of July 1st, which is the middle of the year, we have negative, we have negative 7,500 of CEP. So negative CEP plus AEP, we net them out as of July 1st. When we net them out, we net half of CEP because we assume that as of July 1st, we have losses of only 7,500. Overall, we still have a positive AEP. Well, if we made a distribution to Rebecca of 6,000, of the 6,000, we're going to say 2,500 is dividend and the remainder is return of capital. Now, Rebecca's balance after that will be 4,000 because what we did is we reduced her basis by 4,000. Therefore, her remaining basis is 3,500. Okay, now, A what happened to AEP? AEP is... AEP is down to zero now. Why? Because remember, what we did is we said, as of July 1st, we have negative 7,500 that reduced this to 2,500. Then of this 2,500, we used 2,500 to become dividend. Now, AEP is zero by July 1st. Assume now the current deficit in Rebecca's account is 30,000. Now, if we assume Rebecca's deficit is 30,000, not 15, when we get to July 1st, we're going to take 15,000 out of CEP and close it to AEP. AEP is only 10. That's going to make AEP negative 5,000. Well, if AEP negative 5,000 and we distribute at 6,000, none of that 6,000 is, is dividend because AEP is negative. None of it is dividend. And out of the 6,000, she only has a basis of 7,500. So we're going to reduce the basis from 7,500 reduce the basis by 5,000. Uh, no. Rebecca basis is reduced to zero from 5,000. We're going to assume that her, ba her basis is zero too. We're changing the scenario here. We're changing, assume her basis are 5,000. If her basis are 5,000 and we distribute at 6,000, well, the 5,000 would reduce her basis to zero and the 1,000 remaining will go into capital gain. Now, assume the deficit in AEP is is 10,000. Now we're, we're assuming here we have a deficit in CEP and a deficit in AEP. Well, the same scenario, there's no dividend and we, her basis will go down to zero and everything else will be capital gain. Let's take a look at more examples. Let's assume we have the shareholder, CEP is 30, AEP is negative 20. Do we net? No, we don't. We only net when it's the opposite. Corporation distributed 20,000. Good. 20,000, it's, it's gonna come out of CEP. We have plenty of CEP, and we're gonna have 10,000 left in CEP, and that 20,000 is dividend because it's coming out of CEP. And we still have AEP of 10, 20,000. Now, by the end of the year, what's gonna happen, this AEP is transferred, the CEP is transferred to AEP plus, and our AEP for the following year is negative 10,000 because and CEP will be zero at the beginning of the year. We talked about this in the prior session. In this example, we have CEP of 30,000, AEP of 20,000, and we have ROC basis of 10,000. We made a distribution of 75,000. Of the 75,000, 30,000 will be absorbed as CEP as dividend, 20,000 will be absorbed as AEP also a dividend, and this is the balance for both of these will be zero because we use them up. Now of the 75, thousand that we distributed fifty thousand is considered dividend what remain is twenty five out of the twenty five ten thousand will be absorbed to return of capital to the basis and the basis is zero and anything remained which is fifteen thousand is considered capital gain let's look at another example we distributed seventy five thousand we have positive CEP negative AEP return of capital is ten thousand of the seventy five thousand we don't net don't net now we don't net. 30,000 is absorbed under CEP and make CEP equal down to zero and all of it is dividend. All the 30,000 is dividend. Well, of the 75,000, 30,000 is absorbed into CEP and 10,000, it's going to be absorbed into the basis. We have a basis of 10 and anything left is return of capital, 35,000. Let's take a look at another example. 
we have negative CEP, positive AEP, return of capital is 10,000. We made a distribution of 75. What do we do now? We net, we net because we have negative CEP, positive AEP, we net them. When we net them, we have AEP, what remain AEP is 5,000. Now 75,000 of that amount, we're gonna say 5,000 coming from AEP as dividend. That's fine, and that's gonna make AEP go down to zero. And what else do we have to do? We don't have any dividend anymore. We look at basis. We have 10,000 of basis. 10,000 will be absorbed as basis, tax-free to the shareholder. And anything else that remains after the 10,000 is capital gains, which is 60,000. So of the 75,000, just to kind of go back and summarize, 5K is dividend, 10K is ROC, return of capital, and the remainder is capital gains. What should you do now? You gotta go to Far Hat Lectures and work additional MCQs through false that's gonna help you understand the difference between current and accumulated earnings and profit in determining how much of the cash distribution from a corporation is dividend, how much of it, which is dividend taxable, how much of it is return of capital, which is tax-free, and how much of it is capital gains. This is an important topic, whether you are a CPA exam candidate, an enrolled agent, or an accounting student. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.